this mask here from the movie Scream is, off, is often hit as a benchmark for, uh, for horror movies, for slash films especially. It does everything apparently right. But a lot of movies didn't have that uh, luck or that kind of concoction to go in that special mwah, chef's kiss place. Tonight I'm going to list five films. I'm going to give my thoughts on how just a couple tweaks could have made them much, much better. Now, one of the ones you might think I'd talk about is House of Wax, but I'm not because you're a heathen and that's a fantastic film. But I'll see you right after this. <laughs> So we're going to start with Children of the Corn. And nope, not just the new Children of the Corn or the remake before, even the original. These have always been sort of iffy moves with me. I kind of like the sequels a lot more than I like the original. And I'll go back and watch the original. I'll kind of like it. But there's always one sticking point for me. And uh, because the kids, the kids are always great. They always pick some really great creepy actors for the children, whether it's the new one or the original, uh, they do fantastic. What I always tend to hate is the monster reveal. When the In the last five minutes or so, they reveal the monster, we get to see what it is, and it really kind of sucks. Let's take that out. I don't mean like, let's just make it kind of, let's not just not show the monster and have some kind of like supernaturally stuff happen. No, I mean, let's really take that out. Let's really make this ambiguous. And rather than just have these kids, uh, you know, kill all the uh, adults off, and we know that they're, they're doing it because there's this creature that's, uh, that's making them do it from the cornfield that's kind of like, that's changed them. Let's not know, though, for sure. Let's keep it completely ambiguous and wonder, is it a, is there a creature? Is there something that's actually whispering to the kids that's, that's kind of making them do it? Or have they just lost it? Have they just gone completely insane and taken out the entire town? See, that aspect, that's really a lot scarier than some cheesy monster CGI or practical effects could ever be. Keep it ambiguous. That, my friends, is how we fix Children of the Corn. All of them. This is kind of controversial because this is kind of starting to get a cult following and become a fan favorite. But uh, Scream 3 has always just ran a slight bit dry for me, even though I still think it's a fantastic film. This one's really easy. It's go back to the original script, uh, keep the Roman bridge apart, add a couple more scenes with them. Uh, so we actually have a bit more kind of like umph to the reveal. But put in the second killer. The second killer is one of the things that was missing in this one. And uh, I think would have had a bit more, add a bit more to it if we added her back in there. And if you don't know, the girl that was playing Sydney in the uh, in the in the new Stab movie was the second killer originally in the film. They ended up taking that out, but it'll be easy to put that back in, even retroactively. You could do it in a future installment. Something like that might add a bit more weight and gravitas to Scream Three, in my opinion. That being said, it's still a decent sequel. I, do enjoy what it's doing and uh, what it does. But I miss two killers, so uh, let's put it back to two killers. I remember watching this movie for the first time and utterly boring it. End up liking it a lot more later on when I listened to the commentary and realized that the people that were making the film actually really did like the series, but the made a bit of a mistake when it came to it, in my not-so-humble opinion. Basically, this one's a bit easier, and a bit easy to kind of pinpoint, especially if, you are, if you're watching the film. One, the micro-naps thing is really nice. Expand on that a bit. Two, switch the leads. Uh, let's be honest, Nancy was not exactly the most dynamic lead. Not that Rooney Mara's not a great actress. She really is. She just really seems to be... And, I hate to use this word because it's going to seem like a bit of a pun, but sleepwalking through this film. And it's more of the case of a character that's not extremely well written. 
also we have Chris, who is a much more dynamic character, played by Katie Cassidy. Uh, she seems like a much better person to follow through with the rest of the film. Also, this is a Nightmare on Elm Street film done in the 2000s. This is at a time when we actually do have fairly decent CGI. I don't mind the fact that I'm using some CGI. I mind that they didn't bother to get creative with this at all. It's He's pretty much a literal slasher killer. There's very little when it comes to him actually using something that's imaginative. The very the most popular of all the Nightmare on Elm Street films does tend to be part three. And part three does really amp up what Freddy and the different, what he can become. I know this is supposed to be a reboot and a restart, but it's modern day times. We actually have uh, technology that we can use to make this dream world look more elaborate and more exciting. So you just switch the leads out, change the, uh, you know, up the uh, the thing on the micronaps a little, a little tiny, just a notch, and have some more elaborate set pieces when it comes to the nightmares. This is Nightmare on Elm Street after all, not, you know, slightly grumpy dreams. This one too also has its fans. However, I'm not one of the big fans of this film. I do find myself enjoying it a bit more each time that I watch it, but the 1974 Black Christmas I like because I think it's just a pitch perfect film and for me it's my top film. Uh, the one that came afterwards is its own little thing, so I uh, I don't really count it as like, you know, oh, this is like harming the Black Christmas name. Uh, but this one here did stick closer to the original Black Christmas, sort of. It turned it into a generic slasher film with a bunch of gore set pieces, which is okay if it was called anything else but Black Christmas. So how do we fix that? Uh, first off, we have already got the uh, the characters Pitch perfect. Characters are great. I like the every actress that is that is in this film. But here we do. Here's the first thing we do right away. First, we stop the killer from looking like Bart Simpson. I'm sorry, that has to go. We take the killer looking like Bart Simpson. He looks, I don't know, he can look normal. He can look disfigured. We don't even have to see him. Actually, I would prefer that because we what we saw of, of him in the original film, remember that, was an eye. It was creepy and, and it worked extremely well. Also, we are going to take out, and this is going to piss some people off, but I'm going to say it right now. We're going to take out the character of Agnes. Um, we don't need a duel like of, uh, of, like, of killers in Black Christmas. The hint in the original film was not that he's teaming up with somebody else, but that he more than likely killed his sister Agnes. So that's kind of the whole crux of it in the, uh, in the first place. Having the sister come in as, like, as his sister daughter uh, character really doesn't work and I don't think it worked when they did the uh, kind of the, the fan film of it either uh, I was really enjoying the fan film until they put the Agnes character back into it and I was taken right out of it again because that for me that's always the biggest mistake in that film I feel that Glenn Morgan came in making the Black Christmas remake right after he made he made Willard and his confidence was shot by that point Willard was actually a really good film and, but I don't think that he thought it was, and I think that he let studio mandate things that he probably shouldn't have. But one, we take away the jaundice from the character in uh, Black Christmas, and we take Agnes completely out of the film. Everything else can stay pretty much the same. If we're going to choose an ending, although the splasher ending is to have uh, the character impaled on a Christmas tree, pretty cool. Uh, I like the more ambiguous ending. We're getting back to ambiguity again, because I kind of like that in my films of him maybe possibly being alive and hearing kind of a ringing and then panning out. That is how I would uh, change, and in, my, and in my opinion, fix Black Christmas. So much potential, so many great actors. And we get Bart Simpson as a killer and a whole story. We can still get part of the story, by the way. We can still get that aspect of it. But one, Agnes does not live from being a child. No, he takes her out. Uh, and um, we don't get to see him. He's always in shadows. What you don't see is can always be a lot creepier than what you do see. And in the case of Black Christmas, the, the first remake, it really is. I'm not going to lie, I'm a bit of an outlier here because I find the movie Prom Night as a PG slasher film actually worked pretty well as kind of a way to introduce kids to the whole slasher genre, like a younger 
um, mindset. But that being said, it there's still potential to make this one a lot better than it actually is. I do like the cast overall with this film here. I, I love the ending and the bleakness of it. Uh, she loses her family in the beginning. Spoiler alert, she loses her, uh, her boyfriend at the end. I probably would have gone a little bit farther though. One, I would do like an unrated cut of this one here. Let's get some actual good gore in this one here. We can still keep the PG, PG-13 rating for the, uh, for the release of Prom Night that we get initially. But let's do a, uh, a kind of a gore, more gore-centric R-rated cut that we can have to kind of appease the more gore-hound fans and the people that just think that a movie can't be a slasher without a lot of blood or nudity. So let's do an R-rated cut where we add in a little bit of that and let's go a little bit farther and kill off pretty much everyone that's associated with her. We're going to kill off the, uh, the, the leftover, the leftover, the you know, the, the new parents, we're going to kill them off as well, and uh, pretty much everybody. Let's leave her actual, uh, we're going to do it again. Let's do this. Let's do this again. Let's actually make this a theme. We're going to make her fate fairly, where am I going with this? Do you know where I'm going with this? Ambiguous as well. Um, we're going to see what happened with her, her family, her boyfriend, the we're gonna get rid of the cop uh all that that's all gonna be all of them bam they all get killed and we give them some we give them some nice good kills we give them some kind of like black christmas remake style kills for the uh for the unrated r-rated copy of it the way however you want to do it but when it comes to her rather than the struggle and what we have happen at the end of the film she's not gonna know we're gonna soror we're gonna house on sorority row this one right here um, she's going to see, she's going to go and she's going to see her boyfriend and his, and his body. We're going to see it, the, the closet door open up uh, and that's it. We're stopping right there. We can do a sequel, we can sequel bait it. We can just leave it as it is. Now I have another one, but, uh, a lot of people are going to really hate this idea on this one, but yeah, this is my list. You can take all five of these Put your thoughts in the comment section down below. I really would appreciate if you did. Um, but I want to uh, leave her fate up in the air. I want to put a bit more blood in this film. I want to like, you know, we're going to, I don't know if we need like a, uh, a, a nude scene. It's prom after all, you know, it's teenagers. And so, uh, you know, depending on, you know, what I'd say, well, let's stick with the gore. The gore part is the, is the part that... That was really missing in this film. The idea of having the teacher that was obsessed with and stalking students is actually a really good idea. And it works really well. We don't have like a mystery to this one. And I don't think we need a mystery to this prom night. Prom night two and three went on to like a, a wacky kind of like supernatural comedy aspect of it. And part four came back to do like a uh, much like kind of like the remake did a, uh, a killer that we know at the beginning of it that stalks these, uh, that stalks these teens. We, a stalk, stalker slasher type of movie works really well. Uh, most people complained about the gore, you know, the pacing on this one here, so we're going to up the pacing a bit, um, snap in much more, like, effective gore scenes, and be a bit more brutal, a bit more nihilistic, um, pretty much, we're going to, she's, it's faded at the beginning of the film when she loses her parents, this is why I'm taking it, it's faded at the beginning of the film when she loses her parents, that this girl has pretty much, she's been cursed by this guy, he is taking out everything in her life, that is good, that is pure, and that is innocent. He literally, she's a high school student, she's, she's, she's young. He's taking, he, by killing her parents, he's taking her innocence. Not the way that he, probably the, the teacher, creepy stalker guy wanted to do it, but in a way he gets to do it. He gets his way in taking her innocence. Having him coming after and stalk her, and continue to do so. It can't just be like randomly killing teens or just killing people off here or there just because he wants to get close to her. We're going to stick with the motif of him continuing to take away any any innocence, any joy that's left in her life. Leave her alone, leave her only for him. So we have to have him take out and succeed in actually taking out everyone else in her life, uh, family, friends, uh, possible saviors, and then leave it open to like, a final battle that we don't get to see. 
I know that will leave a lot of people frustrated with, oh my God, what happens once that door opens? But sometimes the best stuff is left in your imagination. It also leaves it up for a sequel as well, where maybe we get to see what happened to her. Maybe we get to see him having killed her and moved on to, uh, you know, got away and moved on to someone else that, he's, that he wants to stalk. Or maybe she actually escapes. And even though he's moved on, a la like Stepfather uh, series, what we can do with that is uh, just basically say, okay, she's a Sydney type character. She's a survivor. She, she realizes he's still out there and she's going to come back. And she's going to kick his butt, butt again after him taking everything away from her. Either way, I think it's a better film than we got. If you enjoyed this list and would like to see more like this, let me know in the comment section down below. If you didn't enjoy this list, well, you can still let me know. Just be kind of nice about it. And give me your thoughts. Like if you say, okay, well, I think this film is good the way it is. There's a lot of Black Christmas fans. That's okay. Uh, if you uh, were a huge fan of Prom Night or a huge fan of one of the other films like Nightmare on Elm Street, or maybe you have your own ideas. I know to uh, switch it up and change it up. I would love to hear that in the comment section down below. Now, I'm going to watch this movie that absolutely does not have anything wrong with it at all. Because it's just great the way it is. Hi there. I want to give a special shout out to my amazing patrons. Uh, you guys are awesome. And I cannot wait to see you guys in the uh, Crimson Cult again. Where we can actually uh, do some cool live chats. we got a lot coming up. And uh, if you want to join this in incredibly awesome group of people that you see scrolling down below. Uh, the link's down below.